Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I'm Noshni Dhal. Let's look at today's top news. A rare case of 28-year-old who triumphed over rare myasthenia gravis with hymoma at Fortis, at Fortis Hospital, Washi. Akash Ingle, who was admitted to Fortis Hospital, Washi, diagnosed with the unusual combination of myasthenia gravis and thymoma. Myasthenia gravis is a chronic autoimmune neuromuscular disease causing muscle weakness, typically affecting older individuals, making it rare in young patients. Moreover, the presence of thymoma in conjunction with myasthenia gravis is even rarer, occurring in only 10 to 12 percent of cases. For the past eight months, Akash faced significant mobility challenges, severely impacting his quality of life. Managing the conditions required him to be on multiple drug regimens, including steroids and immunosuppressants, further affecting his well-being. To talk about this case in detail, we have with us today Dr. Priya, consultant, thoracic oncosurgeon, Fortis Hospital, Washi. Welcome to Medical Dialogues, Doctor. So, Doctor, please tell us about the case. So this gentleman, Mr. Akash, 28-year-old, uh, he's a mobile dealer, small mobile dealer. He got a shop and uh, got married a year ago. And since eight months or so, he started facing difficulties in uh, walking, in chewing, in swallowing. Uh, he used to have shortness of breath early morning, especially uh, making day-to-day life quite difficult. So he was diagnosed uh, as having myasthenia gravis which is a, uh, it's an autoimmune disease of neuromuscular junction. So where your nerves uh, uh, join the muscles or the junction. So that uh, it's autoimmune basically means your own antibodies fight against your body. So it's an autoimmune uh, neuromuscular disease wherein the, there it leads to weakness of your skeletal muscles. Initially the big muscles and then they go on to central muscles from periphery to century. So that is uh, how it, he progressed. And he was referred uh, to me somewhere in the month of uh, May, June uh, with these complaints. So he came and met me. And uh, just prior to coming, they had got a CT scan also done, which showed a presence of a tumor in the thymus gland. It's called thymoma. Uh, that uh, thymoma occurring in a patient of myasthenia gravis is uh, only 10%. So uh, that is something which is also, uh, it can turn to be cancerous in the future. So that needs to be removed. That's how the patient came to me. So what were the challenges you faced? So myasthenia gravis is a, is a, as I said, is an autoimmune disease which targets the patient's own body. So it leads to weakness of all the muscles, including the respiratory muscles and muscles in for this patient, it was quite acute. He had progressed very rapidly in eight months. He was on multiple drugs, including immunosuppressants and uh, steroids uh, to make sure that he's able to do his routine activities. So these patients are a challenge uh, in the anesthesia, in the perioperative phase, because uh, they are already on so many medications and plus can push them into a crisis. So before the surgery, uh, the first challenge we tried to uh, take care of, of Anastasia is by giving him plasma pheresis, three cycles uh, before the surgery. That was given elsewhere before the patient came because he is not in, uh, doesn't reside in Navi Mumbai. In that, we, it's something like dialysis, wherein we change the plasma of the body so that the uh, autoimmune uh, component of the plasma that is taken care of at least temporarily, just tides over the time. So that was done uh, in uh, in uh, planning with the surgery. So he finished 48 hours before the surgery. Then once he came to the hospital, we uh, repeated a CT to confirm the findings. The day of the surgery, he was pretty okay because uh, we had three plasmas and we could tide over the surgery. He could manage the surgery well. Uh, he was, we were able to remove it from the ventilator on the table at the end of the surgery. And uh, we could do a VATS, which is lucky because his tumor size was small. If it was a big tumor, it, was, it would have been difficult to remove uh, minimal invasively. But uh, since the team was uh, capable of doing a minimal invasive surgery, we could remove all the, the thymus gland and all the fat, which, is, which lies above the heart, basically, between the lungs. That entire thing has to be removed. So we could remove that uh, through a uh, minimal invasive, that is a keyhole surgery. 
and uh, after the surgery the anesthetists were able to thankfully remove him from the ventilator also and we, he was kept on a mask ventilation a non invasive ventilation it is called overnight the problem started after two days so on the second post operative day he had uh, he faced a myasthenia crisis again like i said myasthenia your muscles uh, get weak right so on the second day his uh, reaction to the surgery the surgical stress and the post op stress uh, came out in a very strong way in which there's a myasthenia crisis the body just just uh, is not able to cough he was not able to uh, do any activities because of that he retained lot of cough and secretions in the uh, in the lungs and uh, thankfully the icu team and the neurology team is were already prepared we were already prepared for this uh, scenario so dr jitendra who is the head of the icu and his team we electively intubated him back put him back on the ventilator for 48 hours and started him on plasma pheresis again uh, dr pavan oja was a neuro neurologist he handled his uh, uh, recovery in that in that part of the uh, treatment he received five plasma pheresis uh, from that day and uh, on the second day of uh, the event we were able to get him off the ventilator again and since then he has been on the road to recovery so the challenges in this uh, in, in this patient in this disease is the patient itself so the disease autoimmune disease uh, makes it very difficult for the entire team the surgeon the anesthetist the intensivist the neurologist uh, each have to be on their toes to get the patient out of uh, a crisis and get him back on the road to recovery okay so how is the patient now uh, what about the prognosis so he has uh, been uh, discharged he is uh, his muscle power is much better so the treatment of thymoma in myasthenia has got two uses one is to remove the thymoma which is very important because it can turn locally malignant and malignant in the future so there are chances of it recurring and growing bigger and invading the heart and uh, uh, the peri the layer of the heart the pericardium and all that so that is uh, one reason why a patient of thymoma with myasthenia or without myasthenia need surgery we you have to remove the thymus gland if there is a tumor there and the second need of the surgery and use of surgery is that a patient of myasthenia gravis uh, who has thymoma has been shown to have Uh, many a times in fact a good proportion of times uh, they start needing lesser and lesser medications for myasthenia and uh, the effect starts coming in few months it can take up a, uh, up to a year to start uh, showing its effects but many a times uh, the patients uh, uh, need lesser and lesser medications and in some patients there is also a complete remission from myasthenia though it is that is not 100% common but a good significant number of patients will at least the dependence on the drugs for his daily living will come down and if you are able to taper his uh, steroids and immunosuppressants off that itself uh, will be a great uh, d- uh, good deal for this patient thank you so much for your insights doctor thank you case was managed extremely well with tremendous efficiency and expertise of dr priya and her team that's all for today stay tuned to medical dialogues for more updates never miss a medical update from medical dialogues like subscribe and press the bell icon